previous lectures, we have covered topics including microscopy, radioisotope technique, chromatography techniques and electrophoresis. All of these techniques are widely used for different applications in, bio, in the various fields of biotechnology. In this lecture, we are going to start a new technique that is centrifugation techniques. Now, centrifugation is one of the most important and widely applied research technique in biochemistry, in cell and molecular biology, in medicine and in various other areas of biotechnology. Now, current research and clinical applications rely on isolation of cells, subcellular organelles or fractions, uh, membrane fractions, macromolecules and lot of other uh, constituents of cell in uh, sometimes in high yields. Now, this separation technique exploits the inherent varied sedimentation property or sedimenting property of substances for their isolation by the application of centrifugation or centrifugal field. It is used as uh, to separate or concentrate material suspended in a liquid medium and the resulting so solution has two components namely the sediment and supernatant. Now, before we go into the details, let us let me give you an overview of this technique and uh, let us understand little bit about what we are going to discuss in this particular lecture or in this particular section. All right. So, what we were uh, like first thing is let us understand this through a very simple experiment. Now, if I take say certain particles of a particular size which are suspended in a uh, say liquid medium, what is going to happen to these particles? which are uh, of a certain size like after some time what is going to happen is after certain period of time these particles will settle down at the bottom. Now, these particles settle down they will certainly take more time to settle down, but these particles settle down because of gravitational pull or gravitational force. Now, if we take an example here that if the size of the particles is larger than these particles, then they will take less time that is gravitational pull will be more and they will settle down faster. Supposing there are particles which are smaller than these particles, then they are going to take more time to settle down. So, what we see is the size plays an important role where through gravity a particular particle is settling down. Now, the rate at which they are settling down is depends on like we have seen size, but also the gravitational force actually or the pull uh, gravitational pull. Now, if you want to increase the rate of uh, settling or sedimentation we can call it, then you have to increase the force on these particles, so that they can settle down faster and this force could be given by uh, given in the centrifuge a particular centrifuge that is when you rotate a particular tube containing this material or these particles suspended in a liquid, then they will experience a particular centrifugal field and they will settle down faster. Now, remember as the particle size goes now there are certain factors on which this whole thing depends. One is like we are talking about size of the particle, another thing would be shape of the particle. Supposing you have a spheric spherical material of a particular molecular mass and you have the same molecular mass your material is elongated or it is a flattened structure, then certainly spherical structure or shape will settle down faster or will move faster under the influence of the centrifugal field rather than a flattened or elongated structure. So, shape will also play a role and then density of the particle. 
denser the particle more faster it will move in the liquid medium when during the centrifugation. So, these factors that is size, shape and density will play an important role as far as particle is concerned when it is put in centrifug uh, in uh, under a centrifugal field. Now, other factors which are going to play uh, are an important role is the medium in which they are suspended like density of medium, viscosity of the medium all these things will also play an important role and also the frictional force because if you remember in uh, electrophoretic techniques and other techniques we have discussed about when a particle or an analyte moves through certain medium and if it is a liquid medium there will be an up thrust and a frictional fo force will also be generated. All right. So, what is uh, happening here is that main thing is that through the centrifugation you are able to sediment a particular particle or particular say macromolecule we can take an example of protein faster. Now, and as we were talking about particle size when we reach to cellular label these things like cell, cell or say subcellular organelles and further if you go like ribosomes or protein materials lipoproteins or nucleic acids these are very small or uh, as far as uh, if we compare the sizes and for settle settling or for uh, sedimentation they will require much higher uh, centrifugation force. So, they can only be like they cannot be settled just on the basis of gravity they need to be uh, put under a particular centrifugal field for sedimentation. Now, these particles also have characteristic density, they have characteristic shapes like proteins uh, could be spherical, they could be elongated depending on whether they are uh, what part particular uh, function they have like say structural proteins are mostly elongated, uh, other proteins which are functional proteins or which are like enzymes like they might have uh, most of the time they will have a spherical or uh, type of structure. So, they will be accordingly, but they have a particular density and uh, all these uh, uh, all these uh, substances uh, which is which could be say subcellular fractions or proteins will be settled at characteristic centrifugal force. Now, centrifugation uh, can be of uh, two types one is uh, which like this technique could be both analytical as well as preparative. Now, when you have preparative centrifugation, then centrifugation is uh, uh, done for uh, purpose of collecting a particular uh, material after the centrifugation and for another biochemical investigation. Now, when you are doing centrifugation, I will show you that in a little while, but just to make you understand the centrifuge uh, provides a means for centrifugation and it has rotors actually these are different kinds of rotors which we are going to discuss in detail, but just for now for now here uh, there could be a uh, angle rotor or swinging bucket rotor or there could be other kinds of rotors uh, which uh, uh, these rotors uh, could be placed on a drive shaft of the centrifuge and the material which needs to be centrifuged is put in the uh, tubes. For example, there is a central drive shaft and if you are putting say there is a rotor here, supposing this is your rotor which has an area to be kept in here. So, this rotor can be kept in here on a drive shaft and this contains areas where you can put your tubes actually. So, this will be in circular fashion and this has an opening this could be closed in here. The when you open this then you can put your tubes in these slots they could be uh, mostly these are even number slots, so that you can balance them and rotor is balanced. Uh, so, uh, when you rotate this at high speed then there is a centrifugal fugal force uh, uh, which is outward and that will lead to the settle uh, settling of or sedimentation of the particular material. So, preparative centrifugation will result in certain mater material which could be recovered after the centrifugation and it could be used for the biochemical applications or investigation. 
as far as like this could include like say you would like to uh, purify or to get at the end say you have a microbial cells you have harvested and you want to get proteins in there you can uh, lyse the cells and then you can centrifuge and proteins will come in the supernatant. So, that can be done. Next is that uh, you can uh, also uh, separate say different subcellular fraction uh, subcellular organelles like say mitochondria, nuclei or uh, lysosomes uh, and lot of like membrane fractions. Likewise, you can also uh, separate at higher speeds uh, protein fractions or ribosomes and other uh, uh, nucleic acids and other fractions. So, as the speed of the centrifugation or if we just call in terms of centrifugal force or revolutions per minute of the rotor, then as the speed increases the centrifugal force increases and the particles which are smaller in size. So, if you increase much more uh, uh, the particles which are much smaller in size also can be uh, sedimented. So, you go from you have centrifuges from low uh, speed centrifuges which are very simple bench top centrifuges to uh, very high speed centrifuges like ultra centrifuge which can go up to like uh, uh, 600 or 700,000 g force. We are going to discuss what is g force. Uh, so, in preparative that is what uh, is that you recover the particular material. While in analytical centrifugation uh, what is done it is mostly you are uh, uh, sedimenting or you are uh, like uh, putting in mostly purified or partially purified material for analysis and analysis could involve say sedimentation behavior of uh, particular uh, analyte or you want to calculate sedimentation coefficient or interactions and a lot of other studies could be done. Now, when you are doing it uh, the rotors and there is a detection system which is available in, anal in analytical centrifugation uh, techniques or analytical centrifuges where uh, in real time you can uh, monitor uh, the whole process as it is going on. So, uh, analytical centrifugations are different than the uh, preparative centrifugation. So, these are uh, now if you consider different types of centrifuges like I said that could be on basis of a speed and capacity they could be differentiated like they could be uh, like uh, low speed uh, and low capacity ones they could be low speed and high capacity uh, centrifuges and uh, they could go up to ultra centrifuges. Uh, which is like uh, very high uh, speeds or very high centrifugal forces available in there. Uh, there could be uh, like uh, these centrifuges could also be differentiated on basis of uh, like uh, there are zonal rotors, there are uh, simple rotors which are for small capacities, uh, there are uh, rotors which are high speed and uh, which can sustain high speed and which can have uh, high capacity as well. So, there are a lot of differentiation which we are going to discuss about um, in terms of types of centrifuges, types of rotors and how do you maintain those rotors like taking care of those rotors uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, like uh, their uh, uh, increasing their age or uh, for better uh, performance. Now, another important thing is uh, what we are going to discuss about is certain methods in uh, centrifugation, um, particularly ultra centrifugation like uh, uh, density gradient centrifugation or differential centrifugation uh, and uh, other uh, we will be discussing about certain zonal rotors also where a large amount like there are both one is batch type rotors. Uh, another is continuous type rotors. Continuous type rotors is that you keep on uh, applying the sample and uh, the uh, also you, uh, the cells are sedimented, but rest of the material is taken out and when this is utilized when large volumes are uh, large volume of samples are available. Uh, like I said uh, there could be many liters of uh, vol volume of sample, but containing very little number of cells where will be utilizing continuous flow 
uh, centrifuges. All right, so uh, this was little bit like uh, an overview, uh, like what we are going to discuss in this section. So, as we were discussing, uh, theoretical basis of centrifugation technique is the effect of gravity on particles. So, like I told you, like particles when they are just suspended in a liquid medium and left, then they will settle down after a certain period of time, uh, depending on what is the size of the particle. And this could be like uh, when you are settling them, uh, two particles which are of different mass will settle in a tube at different rates in response to gravity. So, uh, if you want to settle them fast, then centrifugal force is used to increase this settling rate. And this centrifugal force is in terms of multiple of gravity gravitation force. That is, if you say uh, uh, like you can say that uh, this, this many time of g force or gravity. Now, a centrifuge what it does is it utilizes this centrifugal force or g force to isolate suspended particle from their surrounding medium on either this could be a batch or like I was saying continuous flow basis depending on your application. Now, so this technique in particular is based upon behavior of particles in applied centrifugal field. That is particles differ in shape, size or density and on this basis on their physical properties, they can be separated as uh, the sediment at different rates from each other in the centrifugal field. Now, the rate is directly proportional to the applied centrifugal field. So, in very simple terms that if you have two particles, if I say shape, if you have two particles of the same size, but different shapes, they could be separated, because they will settle down according to their shape also. Likewise, if you have two particles of same size, but they have uh, different kinds of like say density, then they could be separated. Likewise, if there are uh, same density particles, but they have uh, different sizes, then also they could be separated. So, these properties could be utilized to separate different kinds of substances or particles from each other and in a centrifuge and the rate at which they will be sedimenting will be directly proportional to the applied centrifugal field. Also, uh, uh, one important thing that will come up is that centrifugal field of force is outward in direction and it will also depend on the distance the, the particle present uh, the distance between the drive shaft or the central drive shaft and the particle that is radius you can say uh, more will be the radius of the uh, uh, particle position from the center more will be the centrifugal force. All right, so, what is done essentially uh, in this, uh, uh, if you see this figure, uh, there is a centrifuge, a very typical uh, centrifuge, it is a bench top centrifuge. And if you can see here, there are uh, like uh, uh, essentially what I would like to show you is there is a rotor in here inside and these are tubes which are put in. To enlarge this here, what is done is this rotor which is placed in on the central drive shaft of the centrifuge which contains a motor to run this. The material or the particle is suspended in a suitable liquid medium and then this particular uh, medium with particle is kept in these centrifugation tubes. Now, these could be plastic tubes or they could be uh, other glass tubes also, but glass tubes can crack when you are uh, uh, like applying larger centrifugal force. So, now if you see here these tubes are kept in this slots which are available in the rotor and this is the uh, rotor screw here which uh, can be closed here and this is the central position where uh, in, the, in the centrifuge it is placed. Now, remember these are centrifuge tubes has to be balanced. So, there are even number of slots and even if you want to put only one sample you have to balance it with the other tube of the same uh, weight actually, because otherwise the balance of the 
centrifuge will be uh, not proper and it will uh, not run properly. So, this is how centrifugation will be done in a centrifuge in a typical centrifuge. Now, this centrifuge could be a very small like micro centrifuge where only micro uh, they are like uh, very small amount of samples could be loaded and could be as big as uh, uh, floor models which could take uh, many liters of the sample. So, but they will essentially my main things are this they have all controls uh, there are refrigeration systems very like ultra centrifuges as vacuum systems uh, they have uh, uh, means to set up the speed uh, limits and uh, according to the rotor uh, you can set the amount of centrifugal force to be applied remember these rotors uh, uh, like they specify the kind of centrifugal force which can be applied on them because they, the material which they are made of can only sustain certain amount of centrifugal force or certain amount of stress. So, these are all automated centrifuges and, uh, and the function well and they are also refrigerated for uh, say biological molecules uh, which can go bad as heat generation might take place. All right, so, uh, the centrifugation uh, is utilized in many different fields like uh, in the field of proteomics it has been uh, quite utilized, it plays a vital ro role and a lot of other fields also cell biology like molecular biology, uh, it plays a very important role. Uh, it has come up like in proteomics, uh, where you require to isolate proteins and like I was uh, telling you that uh, large amount of uh, uh, harvested cells uh, are taken where you are you have cloned and you are expressing a protein or from cell you are uh, trying to uh, read the proteome of a particular cell. Uh, so, uh, where it is necessary to disrupt or lyse the cells and uh, this could be done by lot of different methods like sonication or French press or freezing and other methods. Uh, once the cells have been opened up then all of their contents that is uh, cell membranes, RNA, DNA, protein, organelles will be mixed in the solvent with uh, and uh, the proteins as well. And then you need to perform centrifugation, uh, so that uh, it could be differential or density gradient as we are going to discuss in later uh, part of this section. Um, and th then uh, what is done is that they can be separated out from the non protein material, proteins could be separated out uh, and uh, this could be then uh, within this centrifuge samples are spun at very high speeds and the resulting force causes particles to separate, uh, settle down or pellet actually we can say uh, and uh, like and based on their densities and other uh, factors. And as far as pelleting uh, like is concerned like uh, let me show you what does that mean actually. So, you have say tubes here and say supposing this is your uh, rotor and now when these are centrifuged then you have material evenly distributed all over like cells or like say if you have lysed the cells then um, both parts of cells like cell membranes inside content everything is in here it is a hazy mixture or now when you centrifuge at a particular centrifugal field what you get is that a pellet and a supernatant is obtained. So, what is pellet? If I say here, then after the centrifugation is complete, then there will be certain material which will be settled on here, on the wall of the uh, of the of the tube, and rest of the material, which is liquid material, clear liquid material, that is supernatant. So this is supernatant, and this is pellet actually. Uh, now remember depending on the kind of the rotor this pellet like for an angle rotor this is angle rotor they will settle down at this side. If it is a swinging bucket rotor where uh, these rotors are uh, spun uh, like when they when they are uh, the centrifuge is switched on then they will go out because they are free actually they are not constrained like in here this rotor this tube is constrained in the slot, but these are not constrained they are open. So, they just fly open and their pellet will be 
at the bottom because centrifugal force is in the this direction. Here centrifugal force is in this direction, therefore the palleting will take place on this wall. Likewise in vertical tube rotors it will happen. So, this is just to uh, explain that uh, when you are doing proteome mix and you are trying to read proteome and you want to separate lot of proteins uh, and you have lysed the cells, then uh, they could be separated out like protein and non-protein material could be separated on centrifugation. So, there are a lot of applications of this particular method or technique and centrifugation is capable of doing lot of different things uh, in various areas and for various applications and all the labs routinely used centrifugation methods. Uh, centrifugation mostly like every lab will at least have uh, a table top centrifuge uh, with a uh, decent capacity and uh, most of the time they might be refrigerated as well. <coughs> so, centrifugation is capable of uh, like for example, it is capable of removing cells or other suspended particles from their surrounding uh, milieu on either a batch or a continuous flow basis. Like batch we have seen just now like how uh, cell lysed cell material could be separated from protein uh, solution. So, it could be utilized for uh, isolating viruses and various macromolecules including DNA, RNA, proteins, lipids, lipoproteins as well they could be also utilized for establishing physical parameters of these particles from their observed behavior during centrifugation. That is like sedimentation coefficient, how fa fast they centrifuge um, in terms of Swedberg unit, we will be talking about that. Uh, they could be utilized for separating uh, dispersed tissues, the various subcellular organelles uh, for example, nuclei, mitochondria, chloroplast. Golgi bodies, lysosomes, peroxisomes, uh, membranes, endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomal subunits, all these things could be could be separated by various methods like uh, say density gradient centrifugation or differential centrifugation. So, there are a lot of different applications of the centrifugation technique actually and like I said it could be both preparative as well as analytical. Now, development of centrifugation, uh, if you if we go in a bit of history, it is started after 1850 and uh, a few uh, like important events which happened during the development of centrifugation. In 1864, uh, Antonin Prandit invented the first dairy centrifuge in order to separate cream from milk. So, uh, that happened uh, in 1864. Then the potential of the centrifuge in the laboratory uh, setting was first exploited by Frederick Mischer in 1869 and what he did was he used a crude centrifuge system to isolate a cell organelle and this process led to the discovery of an important new class of biological constituents uh, and these are macromolecules known as nucleic acids. In 1879, Gustav D. Uh, Level demonstrated the first continuous uh, centrifugal separation making its uh, commercial application uh, feasible. So, the continuous centrifugal separator was uh, uh, invented. Then in uh, 1926, Theodor Swedberg, one of the uh, person who has done a lot in the field of centrifugation and he received a Nobel also for uh, the invention of the analytical ultra centrifuge. Uh, and this was capable of achieving very high g force uh, like 900,000 g force. When we say g force it is a multiple of g actually that is gravitational force. So, he was awarded Nobel for uh, this particular uh, thing that is uh, invention of analytical ultra centrifuge uh, and his work on colloidal chemistry. And this started a revolution in the understanding of the structure of proteins like you can analyze proteins with different uh, uh, properties of the proteins uh, in terms of sedimentation coefficient and other uh, in here. Now, French physicist Emily Henroy developed the first preparative ultra centrifuge 
uh, which was able to achieve very high rotational speeds by means of uh, bearing less top driven and uh, supported by compressed air. So, it was like uh, uh, very high rotational speeds for preparative ultra centrifuge were achieved uh, in uh, very special uh, centrifuges. Uh, then interest in the isolation of viruses brought Edward Pickles and John, uh, Johannes Bauer together to build the first high speed vacuum centrifuge suitable for the study of filtrable viruses. And later uh, Pickles went on to develop the more conventional uh, electrically driven ultra centrifuge. So, th there are a whole lot of uh, development which took place in uh, 1900 or 19 20th century. Uh, during the early 1930s, uh, uh, Martin uh, Behrens developed improved centrifugation technique using density gradients of non aqueous solvents for the separation of nuclei. In 1942, uh, Albert Cloud and James Potter published a landmark paper that is, isolation of chromatin threads from the resting nucleus of leukemic cells. And this paper outlined a series of centrifugation steps in which either the uh, supernate or the sediment was collected uh, until chromatin threads were retrieved from the final sediment. In 1949, Spinko introduced the model L, the first preparative ultra centrifuge to reach a maximum speed of 40,000 rpm and this marked the dramatic change in the uh, this particular company that is Spinko. In 50s, uh, like in early 50s, uh, this saw the introduction of density gradient centrifugation for tissue fractionation, a process developed by a plant virologist Myron K. Uh, Brack working at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. In 1954, Beckman uh, instruments, now Beckman Coltier actually, uh, started improving the design of centrifuges, many of which are still used today. Uh, and uh, the drive systems were replaced with high speed motors and the material used for the rotor blade was upgraded. So, Beckman uh, uh, made very popular uh, centrifuges. In 1962, uh, there was like a company based in Hamburg, Germany and now it is known as Appendorf developed the first micro centrifuge for a simple laboratory use. In 1976, the world's first microprocessor control centrifuge was launched uh, by Hattich. So, <coughs> uh, during the 1980s, Beckman launched the first floor cent ultra centrifuges and during 1990s, Beckman launched the Avanti high performance centrifuge, which went on to be one of the most popular centrifuges models in the history. Also during this decade, the first centrifuge capable of robotic operation was developed by Hattich. So, uh, this centrifuge also uh, offered PC control and ad adjustable rotor positioning. Uh, there were a lot of other developments uh, where uh, like in 1992, the PAC pressure added centrifugation system was developed by Henkel and a lot of other development took place. Like in 2000, Appendorf innovated its line of classic micro centrifuges uh, with the cooled, uh, these were cooled centrifuges and the smallest and quietest, uh, you can say centrifuges. And also Appendorf also launched personal centrifuges like mini spins and mini spin plus. So, there were a lot of development as uh, the time passed uh, and uh, now uh, the modern uh, centrifuges are very advanced and uh, automated also with a lot of options. Uh, in future like now centrifuges uh, have a lot of different uh, advanced technologies. Like for example, ca in case of rotors, rotors have very high tensile strength. The tensile steel is uh, uh, like is replaced by uh, materials such as aluminum alloys and particularly titanium uh, in order to withstand high centrifugal force. Most of the high speed 
uh, uh, rotors are made of from titanium uh, uh, and uh, they could uh, withstand very high stress actually. Uh, there are standard features now included in the centrifuges for say uh, cooling, for programming, uh, for uh, programming uh, a particular run uh, like automatic imbalance detection like for example, if you are putting in uh, uh, two tubes like I told you, you have to balance them if the balance is not there, uh, the centrifuge will not run. So, those kinds of things are uh, incorporated. Noise reduction uh, has been a very important part of this development and changeable rotor systems like you can put many rotors on the same centrifuge. You can put like say uh, Appendorf rotor or micro centrifuge rotor or you can put 50 ml tubes rotor or uh, say swinging bucket rotor, many different types of rotors are put. So, the centrifuges which are now operating and which are being developed are much more advanced um, and very high speed centrifuges like ultra centrifuges, vacuum systems uh, has been added in these modern centrifuges to reduce the friction and maintain the temperature control. So, a lot of uh, 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 automation, a lot of advancement has taken place and is still going on in the area of centrifugation and very good centrifuges are now available uh, for various applications. Till now, I have given you an overview of the centrifugation technique. Now, let us discuss about uh, the basic principle of centrifugation. Now, centrifugation method is based on the principle of sedimentation and when a particle sediments, what it does is it displaces some of the solution in which it is suspended. So, that will result in an upthrust on the particle and that will be equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. Now, uh, rate of separation in a suspension of particle by way of gravitational force mainly depends on the particles size and density. So, size and density are the main and uh, including shape are the main uh, factors uh, which will determine the sedimentation behavior of a particular particle. Now, particles of higher density or say larger size typically travel at a faster rate and at some point will be separated from particles less dense or smaller. So, smaller particles will travel at a smaller uh, like they will take more time to settle down as compared to larger or higher density particles which will settle down faster. Uh, extremely small particles will not settle down uh, or settle out of solution unless they are subjected to a very high centrifugal force. So, like I was discussing in the very beginning that as the particle size becomes smaller, then the amount of centrifugal force which needs to be applied becomes larger. Uh, so, uh, that is how it will be that smaller particles will not settle out easily and they require much higher force. For example, if you have to settle down say or sediment certain protein material, uh, then you have to apply much larger force as compared to the if you want to settle or uh, say subcellular fraction has to be uh, sedimented, where you require a less force. So, when a suspension is rotated at a certain number of revolutions per minute, now remember here uh, there are two ways you can uh, uh, you can uh, like uh, understand uh, this uh, centrifugal force application. One is in terms of revolutions per minute uh, and another is centrifugal force which is uh, like uh, which is re in real it being experienced by a particle. So, so, when a suspension is rotated at a certain number of revolutions per minute, then the centrifugal force causes the particle to move rapidly away from the axis of rotation. And, uh, and another thing is the where the particle is present, whether it is very close to the center of rotation or it is far from the center of rotation, both of these particles uh, will experience different centrifugal force. So, the rate of sedimentation depends on the applied centrifugal field and that that is uh, represented if we say in capital G here. Uh, 
which is being directed radially outwards actually. So, centrifugal force anything which moves in circular motion it will experience a outward centrifugal force. There is a centripetal force which is inward and there is a centrifugal uh, force which is outward. And this uh, outward force is given by omega square r this is uh, which is like uh, uh, it is a angular velocity uh, and this is square of angular velocity and r is the radial distance in centimeter and uh, angular velocity is in radian per second. Uh, it is in radians. Uh, so, uh, r is the radial distance of the particle from the axis of rotation. So, that is how a, a particular uh, centrifugal field is being experienced by a particle uh, and rate of sedimentation will depend on that particular uh, centrifugal field. Now, this uh, angular velocity can also be uh, expressed in terms of the revolutions per minute and you can write that angular velocity or omega equals 2 pi revolutions per minute divided by 60 or it could be written in terms of g force or centrifugal field which is 4 pi square revolutions per minute and to r divided by 3600 that factor 60 uh, the square of the 60 here. So, if you see in this figure here this is typical like uh, direction of the rotation like when you apply when you switch on the centrifuge then rotor will uh, centrifuge in a particular direction and there will be an applied centrifugal force uh, which will be in outward direction like if it is the axis of rotation the outward force will be in uh, perpendicular to that axis of rotation and that will be outward centrifugal uh, force will be applied depending on what kind of rotor like I said. Uh, but the the direction of applied centrifugal will field will be the same here. Uh, as we were talking about the radial distance from the center, if you can see here, uh, if the tube is an angular rotor, as we'll discuss uh, in uh, coming time. Uh, there will be two like r minimum, which is the meniscus here uh, from uh, the of the tube from the center of the rotation and there is r maximum which is the bottom of the tube from the center of rotation. So, many times r average could be calculated or taken as we will discuss later. So, this particular thing could be these are centrifugal effects you can say uh, when uh, this uh, uh, revolutions per minute are being taken here uh, or you can take it in terms of angular velocity. So, uh, now g or the centrifugal field is generally expressed uh, like I said at multiples of earth's gravitational field. So, earth's gravitational field is all the time present which is 981 uh, centimeter per second square per square second and it is the ratio of the weight of the molecule in centrifugal field to the weight of the same particle when acted upon by the gravity alone. It is referred to as the relative centrifugal force or the g force and the relative centrifugal force can be given by uh, this particular equation which is like uh, uh, you have divided it by 981 or the gravitational force also to give the relative centrifugal force and in simplified terms it comes out to be 1.118 into 10 raised to the power minus 5 revolutions per minute square uh, into the radial distance. So, uh, this is like how you can calculate relative centrifugal force in terms of the gravitational force and which is the most widely used term here. So, it could be either revolutions per minute could be utilized or the relative centrifugal force could be utilized. So, we will stop here in this lecture and in this lecture we have discussed about the basic features of centrifuge, uh, an overview of the centrifugation technique where how a particular property that is size, shape and density of uh, a particle can be utilized uh, to separate them uh, in the centrifugal field and the for this purpose uh, particular purpose there are different kinds of centrifuges are used and as we have seen in the history of the development of centrifuges they have developed from a very simple uh, centrifuges to very complex and very advanced centrifuges now 
Um, there could be different types of centrifuges right from simple uh, small capacity uh, bench top centrifuges to uh, ultra centrifuges. So, we will continue our discussion in the next lecture and we will uh, be discussing about the we will uh, extend our discussion on basic principle of centrifugation. Thank you.